Minneapolis and St. Paul were first connected by electric streetcars in 1890 with the completion of what was called the Interurban, the streetcar line that used University Avenue between the two downtowns. The route is almost identical to today's Green Line light rail, running through downtown Minneapolis on 5th Street, across the Washington Avenue Bridge through the U of M campus, and then University Avenue all the way to St. Paul. What follows is a trip from downtown Minneapolis to downtown St. Paul using vintage photos and movies from the 1940s and 50s. The streetcars terminated on the Minneapolis end at a double track Y at the corner of 5th Avenue North and 5th Street, just across the street from today's Target Field. Leaving the Y, it took the 5th Street Viaduct over the railroad corridor, which included the rail lines, the freight houses, and the yards that fed Minneapolis's warehouse district. The intersection of 5th and Hennepin was a major transfer point. Here the interurban crossed the Como Harriet Line, the Oak Harriet Line, the Bryant Johnson Line, and in earlier years, the Bryn Mawr, Kenwood, and St. Louis Park Lines. A full-time supervisor was stationed here to monitor the streetcars and keep them on time. Here we're looking east on 5th Street. The Lumber Exchange building is at the left. This is the site today of the Green Line and Blue Line LRT station for Hennepin Warehouse District. A streetcar approaches Nicollet Avenue. and continues another block to Marquette Avenue, passing Powers Department Store on the left. Two blocks later, the streetcars pass City Hall, and a block beyond City Hall turned from 5th Street onto 5th Avenue South. After two blocks on 5th Avenue South, the streetcars turned right onto Washington Avenue next to the train shed of the Milwaukee Road Depot. From there, they continued down Washington all the way to Seven Corners. That's the Rock Island rocket in the depot. Washington Avenue was shared with other streetcar lines. A telephoto shot looking up Washington. The Milwaukee Road's afternoon Hiawatha prepares to leave for Chicago. And because we've got some neat footage here, we're going to take a little diversion. The engineer oils around his engine. And we're off. At the time, this was one of the fastest trains in the United States, hitting 100 miles an hour repeatedly through Wisconsin. And this is it rounding the curve to go across the Mississippi River Bridge into St. Paul. Okay, that was fun. Back to the streetcars. 
Leaving the Milwaukee Road Depot, the tracks crossed over Washington Avenue on the notorious Washington Avenue Viaduct. Because of its low clearances, trucks were always getting stuck under it, and it flooded frequently, interrupting the streetcar service. Uh, this is a view towards Seven Corners from on top of the viaduct. At Seven Corners, the inner urban turned east onto Washington Avenue. This is where it diverged from the East 25th Street line, the Fort Snelling line, and the Cedar Avenue line. This was a major transfer point for passengers coming up on those lines from the south and transferring to the inner urban, especially students going to the University of Minnesota. And frequently there was a supervisor based here. Washington Avenue crossed the Mississippi River on this bridge, which was notoriously rickety. Streetcars had a 10 mile per hour speed limit. You'll notice the sign, no trucks on the bridge. And you can see the automobiles passing the slower streetcar. There's one of the big natural gas holders that was located just north of Seven Corners. And one of the modern PCC cars uh, gains the East Bank and enters the University of Minnesota campus. The big stop for the campus was in front of Kaufman Union. This view out the front door of Kaufman looks up the mall towards Northrop Auditorium. After World War II, to make room for returning soldiers attending the university under the GI Bill, a whole series of temporary buildings were constructed. Here's a view looking east from one of the Kaufman Union footbridges at the intersection of Washington and Church Street. This is east of Oaken, Washington, where the interurban crossed the Oak Harriet line. The streetcars entered University Avenue, which would take them all the way to downtown St. Paul. This view is from the Prospect Park water tower, looking out over the grain elevator area of southeast Minneapolis. The streetcars crossed into St. Paul at Emerald Street, right where today's KSTP studios are. There was a Y there to turn streetcars. In that pre-freeway era, University Avenue was Highway 12. And in 1948, the Minnesota Highway Department completely rebuilt the University Avenue section within St. Paul. In addition to repaving the street, they installed new streetcar tracks. And at every block, they put in a safety island. And at the end of the safety island was what they called a bullnose, which would protect passengers who were standing on the island from being run over by automobiles. Uh, these two views look east and west at Vandalia Avenue in the Midway District. Between Cleveland Avenue and Pryor Avenue, University Avenue crossed the large railroad yards of the Minnesota Transfer Railroad, originally on a large viaduct. In later years, the viaduct was replaced by a pair of underpasses. One of them remains in place today. Just beyond the underpass is Pryor Avenue. This was the terminus of the Hamlin streetcar line that took Minnehaha Avenue and Thomas Avenue into downtown St. Paul. University Avenue made a sweeping curve to the east at Fairview Avenue. At Snelling Avenue, the University Avenue line crossed the Snelling Avenue Crosstown line and passed the operational heart of the streetcar system, the Snelling Station and the attendant Snelling streetcar shops. Snelling Station was one of two streetcar barns that served St. Paul, and it handled day-to-day -day operations. Snelling Shops were where all the streetcars were designed and manufactured and overhauled. 
the employment office, the track department, the overhead wire department, and the central stores department were also based here. A streetcar passes the track entrance to Snelling Station. Next door to Snelling Station was the huge Montgomery Ward store and distribution center. Like its competitor, Sears, at Lake in Chicago, it managed to find a site that had streetcar access to the front and railroad freight car access to the back. In the 1950s and 60s, University Avenue in the Midway was the center for automobile dealerships. Looking east from Lexington Avenue, you can see Snelling Station and Shops in the far distance, and then Montgomery Ward, and then in the foreground, Lexington Ballpark, home of the St. Saint Paul Saints. The ballpark was a major traffic generator for the streetcars, no more so than on Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day, when the Saints played split doubleheaders with the Minneapolis Millers. The first doubleheader started at about 10 o'clock in the morning at one ballpark, when the game ended, everyone piled on the streetcars and went to the other ballpark for a game at about 3 o'clock. Just west of the ballpark was another traffic generator, the Prom Ballroom, seen here at right. Here's a view looking west from Chatsworth, about a quarter mile east of Lexington. This is Dale Street, where the University Avenue line crossed the Dale Street line. For the last mile from Dale Street to Rice Street on University Avenue, the streetcar tracks were set off from regular traffic by a curb. This created an exclusive right-of-way, just like today's light rail line. At Rice Street, the University Avenue line was joined by the Como Harriet, Rice Street, Hamlin, and Western Avenue lines. All the lines shared the same track into downtown St. Paul on Wabasha Street. This aerial view of the Capitol shows a landscape that has changed quite a bit since then. All of Wabasha Street, which you see cutting a diagonal from Rice Street to the bottom left of the photo, is gone. Replaced by curving Constitution Avenue, which has since been renamed Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. This is Wabasha looking southeast from Rice Street as a winter carnival event is letting out. Here is a sequence of shots on the newly constructed Constitution Avenue. You can see the state office building at right. After making a semicircle in front of the Capitol on Constitution, the streetcars turned right and descended into downtown St. Paul on Wabasha Street. Seventh and Wabasha was a major transfer point where the University Avenue line crossed several other lines. A permanent supervisor was stationed in that little round-topped hut. His job was to monitor the performance of the streetcars and keep them on time. Two blocks later, the streetcars turned left onto Fifth Street. Travel down Fifth Street crossing Cedar and Minnesota Street. 
and turned again at Fifth and Robert onto Robert Street. Seventh and Robert was also a transfer point and was sort of the retail heart of downtown St. Paul with the big Donaldson's Golden Rule and Emporium department stores on the corner. Completing the loop through downtown St. Paul without taking any layover to get back on schedule, the streetcars turned from Robert onto 9th Street, traveled the three blocks back to Wabasha, and turned right on Wabasha to head back to Minneapolis. The University Avenue streetcar line was abandoned in 1953 and converted to bus. In 2014, rail returned to University Avenue in the form of the Green Line Light Rail, which almost exactly duplicates the old streetcar. 